When the Spaniards came into the Philippines, they brought with them their patriarchal values about women which eventually diffused into Philippine culture. When we say patriarchal, my dear students, a system of society in which the father or eldest male is the head of the family. The women during the Spanish period were tied to the house and their roles were confined exclusively to housekeeping and child rearing. So ang mindset noon, nung panahon ng mga Spaniards, ang mga babae daw dapat nasa loob lang yan ng bahay, nag-aalaga ng anak at tagasunod sa asawa. On the other hand, there was an idea that men should be the provider of the family and protector of the women. Women were also taught to be compliant to elders and always submissive to males. Dapat sumusunod sila sa mga kalalakihan. Okay? They were oriented to focus on building skills that would make them good daughters, housewives, mothers, and servants of God. Women were even banned from participating in political undertakings because it was considered as man's work. So, mapapansin talaga natin before, during the time of the Spaniards, okay, na ang mga babae walang posisyon sa gobyerno. Majority or lahat ng mga government positions ay binibigay sa mga lalaki. Filipinos were familiarized to a patriarchal system of education which emphasized the domestic value that women were the property of men. The letter Young Women of Malolos was written in Tagalog while Rizal was in London. So ito, sinulat to ni Rizal nung siya ay nasa London. Wala siya sa Philippines nung naisulat niya ang To the Young Women of Malolos. So, on December 12, 1888, a group of 20 women of Malolos petitioned Governor General Whaler for permission to open a night school so that they may study Spanish under Teodoro Sandico. Unfortunately, Father Felipe Garcia objected, resulting into the turning down of the petition by the Governor General. Okay, so these young women of Malolos, 20 sila, na halos sila naman ay magkakamag-anak, magtita, magpipinsan, at sila ay kabilang sa middle class, mga babaeng may kaya sa buhay. Okay, so nag-request sila sa Spanish government na kung pwede daw mag-open ng night school where they could study, they could be taught of Spanish language. Wow, that is something tabu, that is something na pinagbabawalan during that time. Or it's like unimaginable for the women to ask that kind of thing. Because during that time, education is more inclined to the boys. And women are seen as nasa bahay lang and no need to go further education. So these young women in Malolos, Bulacan participated in a peaceful movement for educational reform. So paano ba natin i-describe ang system of education during the time of Spaniards. Balikan ulit natin yung midterm lessons. Education for females was not the same with males. Okay? Iba yung curriculum, iba yung subjects na ino-offer sa mga lalaki at sa babae. Education for women was more of a privilege than a right. Okay? Privilegio lamang siya kung sino lamang yung may access, kung sino lamang yung may kaya, kung sino lamang yung may gusto. Pero sa mga lalaki, ang education ay isang right, isang karapatan, mandated na mag-aral sila. Sa mga kababaihan, privilege lang siya, optional lang siya. Okay? Majority of elementary and secondary schools as well as colleges were exclusively for males. Okay? Kung mapapansin natin, noon talagang merong separate school for male and female. Now, bakit ganun na lang kainteresado itong mga kababaihan ng Malolos na matuto ng Spanish language? The women of Malolos Bulacan desired to learn the Spanish language because it was the language of politics and society. So, yun yung medium of language na ginagamit dito sa Philippines. Okay? And the government communicated directly with the friars who knew both the Spanish and the native language. So, imagine nyo yun. Ang mga Espanyol, yung mga nagtatrabaho sa gobyerno, alam nila ang wika natin at the same time yung wika nila. Unlike sa ating mga natives, sa mga katutubo daw, ang alam lang nila ay yung sarili nilang lengkwahe. Hindi sila marunong magsalita ng Espanyol. Okay? And to the friars, it would be better not to teach the natives and mestizos the Spanish language so that their minds will not be penetrated by the liberal idea since most books were written in Spanish. So, malaking threat talaga sa Spanish government, pati sa mga friars, na matuto ang mga natives ng Spanish language. Why? Majority ng mga books noon ay naisulat 
in Spanish language. For example, yung two great novels of Rizal, the Noli and El Fili, were both written in Spanish language. So according to the friars, gaining knowledge would make them crave for freedom and demand human rights. Yun yung threat sa kanila. Na kapag natuto ng wika ang Kastila ang mga Filipinos kapag nakabasa sila ng mga liberal books, for sure, merong tendency na humingi sila ng kalayaan, freedom, or humingi sila ng mga reforma, ng mga pagbabago. But these young women courageously sustained their agitation for the establishment of the school. They triumphed in the end and were granted permission to their project on the condition that Senorita Guadalupe Reyes should be their teacher. So yung unang petition na ginawa nila, na-reject. And then pagkatapos nun, humingi ulit sila ng request. Nag-request ulit sila na magtayo talaga ng night school at gusto nilang matuto ng Spanish language. So in the end, nagtagumpay sila dun sa kanilang petition. Ngayon, ang ginawa ni Marcelo H. Del Pilar okay, to praise these young women for their bravery and courage dahil sa kanilang katapangan nag-request si Marcelo H. Del Pilar kay Rizal na nasa London pa to write a letter commending them or commending the young women of Malolos for their extraordinary courage. Okay, so something talaga nakakaiba itong Young Women of Malolos, ang lakas ng loob nilang mag-request noon sa Spanish government kahit na alam nilang walang equality between men and women. So talagang tuwang-tuwa si Rizal nung nalaman niya na palaban na rin pala ang mga Filipino women. Okay? Kaya hindi siya nag-atubili na magsulat ng letter para sa kababaihan sa Malolos Bulacan. These are the main points of Rizal's essay, The Young Women of Malolo. So dito nagpo-focus or ito yung mga highlights ng kanyang essay. First, rejection of the spiritual authority of the friar. Second, defense of private judgment. Third, qualities Filipino mothers need to possess. Fourth, duties and responsibilities of Filipino mothers to their children. Fifth, duties and responsibilities of a wife to her husband. And lastly, counsel to young women on their choice of a lifetime partner. So dito umiikot yung main points ng letter ni Rizal to the young women of Malolos. Rizal expressed satisfaction for what the young women of Malolos fought for. Talagang tuwang-tuwa si Rizal nung time na to kasi somehow palaban din pala ang mga Filipino women. So Rizal's ultimate desire was to afford Filipino women with the same opportunities enjoyed by men in education. An education that will liberate women. So ang point dito ni Rizal, there must be equality of rights regardless of the gender. Especially equality in education. Okay? Dapat same ang opportunities between men and women. He emphasized the need for maintaining the independence of mind and reason. He urged women to be vigilant over their rights and not to be docile and passive in their attitude towards the many injustices forced upon them. So sabi niya dito, mga kababaihan, dapat maging aware kayo, maging attentive kayo sa inyong mga karapatan. At the same time, huwag kayong palasunod, huwag kayong sunod ng sunod sa mga sinasabi sa inyo. Okay, now let's try to talk about the responsibilities of Filipino mothers to their children. Okay, so dun sa to the young women of Malolos, hindi lang naman about dun sa mga dalagita. Meron ding uh, part dito na nagbigay si Rizal ng mga advice tsaka mga dapat gawin na mga nanay okay? so it is the mothers who are responsible for the present servitude of our compatriots owing to the unlimited trustfulness of their loving hearts to their ardent desire to elevate their sons what then was Rizal trying to put across here? He was trying to tell the women that whatever the mother is would be her son becomes. Mothers who can teach nothing else but kneeling and kissing the hand of the friars should expect children who are not only stupid but also exploited slaves. Ang point dito ni Rizal, kung ang mother ay palasunod sa 
gobyerno ng Espanya, ganun din ang anak, palasunod din sa gobyerno ng Espanya. Kung ang nanay ay nakikinig at nagpapaalipin sa mga Spanish friars, ganun din ang anak, magpapaalipin at makikinig sa Spanish friars. So, malaki ang impluensya ng mga nanay sa kanilang anak. Kaya kung ano talagang puno, siya din ang bunga. Okay? Moving on, what then are the duties of the Filipino mothers to their children? First, to raise children close to the image of God. So, dapat daw si nanay turuan si anak na maging malapit sa Diyos. Magkaroon siya ng pananampalataya or faith. Second, to awaken and prepare the mind of the child for every good and desirable idea. Dapat si nanay turuan ang anak ng mga mabubuting bagay, mga kabutihan. Third, to teach children to prefer death with honor than life with dishonor. Dapat maturuan daw ni nanay si anak nung idea na mas okay mag-sacrifice ng may karangalan. Okay? To die with honor means to die while thinking of others before yourself. A selfless person. A good example here yung mga soldiers natin. ba? Diba? They defend our country knowing that anytime their life may be taken away. Results stress the need for mothers to educate their children on the following values. So, ito yung mga dapat daw pag-uugali na itinuturo ni nanay sa mga anak. Love for honor, sincere and firm character, clear mind, clear conduct, noble action, love for one's fellow men, and respect for God. Ano naman yung mga qualities na dapat taglay daw ni nanay? Okay, qualities mothers have to possess according to Rizal. First, the Filipino mother has to be a noble wife. Dapat ang mga Filipino mothers marangal bilang asawa. Okay, that is according to Rizal. Second, she has to rear her children in the service of the state. Rizal gives reference to the women of Sparta who embody this quality. So, ang sabi ni Rizal, dapat... Yung pag-uugali na meron kayo ay katulad ng mga Spartan women, okay? Ang mga Spartan women had a reputation for being independent-minded and they enjoyed more freedoms and power than their counterparts throughout ancient Greece, okay? Kakaiba ang mga Spartan women. Palaban sila and then meron silang equal rights with men. What makes the Spartan women more astonishing is the fact that they rock their roles as strong, independent females in an era unlike other women who were dominated and seen as subservient to men. So, itong mga Spartan women, palaban talaga sila. Hindi sila basta-basta nagpapadaig sa mga kalalakihan. Okay? So, sabi ni Rizal, tularan nyo yung mga qualities ng Spartan women. And then number three, a wife has to set the standards of behavior for men around her. Three basic things a wife must instill in the mind of her husband. Activity and industry, noble behavior, and worthy sentiments. Ito yung mga, mga pag-uugali na dapat uh, ituro ni Mrs. kay Mr. Activity and industry, noble behavior, and worthy sentiments. Rizal gave the following advices to a married woman. So, nagbigay si Rizal ng advice sa mga ikinasal na at may asawa na. First, aid her husband. Okay? Yung mga may asawa na, dapat daw tulungan nila si Mr. You aid or you help your husband in any aspects of life. Second, share his perils. Damayan daw si Mr. sa problema. The husband and wife should share whatever problems they have. It's a win-win situation. Hindi pwedeng isa lang ang kikilos at gagawa ng solusyon sa problema. That is the advice of result. Number three, refrain from causing him worry. Okay, so huwag daw pinag-aalala si Mr. And the last one, sweeten his moments of affliction. So kapag daw nagdadalamhati o di kaya may sakit or may pain na dinaramdam si Mr., matutong lumambing mga misis. Wow. So lambingin nyo daw si Mr. Pagaanin nyo yung worries ni Mr. Huwag maging cold at walang pakialam sa asawa. Okay? So alam nyo na kung kayo ay may asawa na, ito yung mga dapat inyong gawin sa inyong mga husband, sabi ni Rizal. Moving on to results advice to unmarried men and women. Okay, so bakay mag-alala my dear students and viewers, meron ding advice si Rizal sa inyo na hindi pa ikinakasal. So mag-start tayo sa mga kalalakihan. Rizal was directly telling young man that 
in choosing their lifetime partner, they should not consider physical beauty nor the sweetness character of a woman, but rather give priority to firmness of character and excellent ideas. Okay, napakasimple ng advice ni Rizal sa mga kalalakihan in choosing a partner in life. Huwag daw tumingin sa labas na anyo, huwag gawing basis yung physical appearance or the physical beauty of a woman. At the same time, huwag gawing standard sa pagpili yung pagiging malambing ng isang babae. That is according to Rizal. An ano dapat ang qualities na tinitignan ng bawat kalalakihan sa isang partner? Okay, a partner must have a firm character, pagiging matatag, pagiging matapang sa buhay, a resilient person. And lastly, the partner must have an excellent ideas, matalino, marunong sa buhay, practical sa buhay. Okay, that is the advice of Rizal to young men in choosing their lifetime partner. Okay, moving on, dun sa advice naman ni Rizal sa mga kababaihan na hindi pa kinakasal. On the other hand, Rizal counseled young women not to surrender their womanhood to a weak and timid heart. There are three things that a young woman must look for a man she is going to marry. A noble and honored man, a manly heart, and a high spirit incapable of being slave. Okay, ang point naman ni Rizal here, kayong mga kababaihan, huwag kayong magpadala sa mga lalaking duwag, mga tatakutin, mga lalaking mahina ang loob. Ang mga traits o pag-uugali na dapat niyong i-consider before kayo magpakasal ay ito. You should find a noble and honored man, isang marangal na lalaki, may respeto sa sarili at sa ibang Tao. Second, a man with a manly heart, lalaking may mabuting kalooban na mamahalin kayo for the rest of your life. You should act with dignity, you should act with self-respect. Hindi yung parang binabastos kayong mga Pilipina. Alam nyo kung bakit? According to the article of Rizal dito sa my To the Young Women of Malolos, Rizal cited an example. A lot of friars and a lot of Spanish travelers from the Philippines, when they go to Spain, kapag bumabalik na sila dun, kung ano-ano daw yung mga sinasabi nila sa mga kababaihang Pilipina. Okay, na ang mga Filipina women daw ay easy to get, susceptible, submissive, sunod lang ng sunod. Okay, iwasan ang pagiging marupok ha? Oh, alam na this. So, galit na galit si Rizal. Hindi daw dapat ganun ang image na nakakarating sa Europe. And last one to consider, a man incapable of being slave. Lalaking hindi magpapaalipin kahit kanino man. Taong may sariling paninindigan at hindi basta-basta nagpapaalipin. Okay, so these are the three things that a young woman must look for a man she is going to marry. Oh, ladies, check it out. Baka gusto nyo rin i-follow yung advice ni Rizal sa inya. Okay? So to summarize the letter to the young women of Malolos, First, Filipino mothers should teach their children love of God, country, and fellow man. Second, Filipino mothers should be glad and honored like Spartan mothers to offer their sons in defense of their country. Third, Filipino women should know how to protect their dignity and honor. Fourth, Filipino women should educate themselves aside from retaining their good racial values. And lastly, Faith is not merely reciting prayers and wearing religious pictures. It is living the real Christian way with good morals and manners. Okay? So it can be said that women of Malolos were the first advocate of the feminist movement in the country for championing the cause of women's right to education and equal rights regardless of gender. So Rizal believed that women should be empowered, okay? Rizal is advocating, hey women, hey lady, get yourself educated because in Europe, women are in higher status because they are educated. So you are doing the right thing. Keep that bravery and courage burning, okay? So ang ganda ng letter ni Rizal to the young women of Malolos na binibigyan niya ng advice. All ladies, all women, all girls in our country. So that ends our lecture for chapter 8, my dear students. I hope you were inspired by the literary works of Rizal. Okay? I hope meron kayong natutunan kahit papaano. Kahit meron kayong value na makuha dito sa tatlong essay na sinulat ni Rizal. So thank you so much for listening.